Hi! Have you ever wondered what happens when a huge magnet comes close to a plasma ball? I have, since the electrically charged particles in a plasma should follow a magnetic field. Can I bend the plasma streamers with a strong enough magnet? I will also measure the light from the plasma to figure out what gases are inside. I was surprised by the output from one of the plasma balls. And not in a good way. Don't play with strong magnets and high voltage unless you know what you're doing. I will also face some invisible high energy radiation. More about it later. Here we have one of my plasma balls doing its thing. Now let's see what happens to the plasma as I put my biggest magnet near it. A monster of a neodymium magnet weighing in at 13 kilograms. Will we see any bending of the plasma streamers? Hmm... I don't see any noticeable bending. Instead, the filaments weaken and disappear as the magnet comes closer. It looks astonishing, but not the effect I expected. Will a smaller plasma globe do the same? Whoops, almost shattered it there. But it seems to react in the same way to the magnetic field. Odd. Third time's a charm. This is a lively one and does not lose its streamers. Until my arms get tired from the weight and lower the magnet. Now it does the same as the other two. And that may be a big clue. The magnet is closer to the base of the plasma ball. A base containing some electronics. Perhaps something in there reacts to the magnet. Looking into one of the bases, it is clear that the wire delivering the high voltage to the plasma is coming directly from an electrical transformer. Maybe the magnet is messing with this transformer in a way that lowers the power output. I believe there's an easy way of testing it. The plasma globes have an AC adapter for the electronics and this heavy one has a good old fashioned transformer inside it. Will it have a similar effect on the plasma if I put this transformer near the magnet? It's a lot of iron to put near such a big magnet. So this will be interesting. Were you too busy watching if I lost a finger? Going closer. Watch the plasma. The exact same thing happens. Looks like the power slowly fades away when I let the magnet near either of the transformers. <laughs> Crazy. I'm not doing that again. To explain why, I have built this model of a transformer. Hope you like my effort enough to click like. A simple transformer has two coils of wire with an iron core going through them. When an electric current passes through one coil, it works as an electromagnet and magnetizes the core. The magnetic field goes through the other coil where the opposite happens. The change in the magnetic field generates a pulse of electricity in the second coil. With an AC input, there's a constant interchange of magnetic pulses between the coils, generating an AC output of another voltage due to a different number of windings in the second coil. This works well until I put a magnet near the transformer. Now, the permanent magnet magnetizes the iron core, making it harder for the coil to do it. When the external magnet is very close to the transformer, the core can be magnetically saturated meaning it is not possible for the coil to magnetize the core even further. The transformer has stopped working. I can show this drop in power by doing the experiment again. I'm not doing that again. You have to. 
this time with a voltmeter showing the transformer's output. This is rather scary and painful in real life. One final attempt. Yep, there's a clear loss in output. Sadly, this transformer is no longer working at all. The magnet's path of destruction is getting longer. And it doesn't even care. At least we now know why the plasma acts like this. But why are the streamers not bent by the magnetic field before they fade out? The charged particles should react. Like demonstrated with the electrons in this old CRT TV. Well, because the electricity used to ionize the gas into a plasma is high frequency AC, not DC. Let me show you a little trick. Take the negative lead off of a multimeter and set it to measure AC voltage. When you point this at the plasma globe, nothing happens. Switching to a more sensitive but still low budget multimeter, this happens. When set to AC, it detects the electric field. When set to DC, it measures nothing at all. On the table, it appears to be a better electrical circuit. However, with the lead having no angle towards the plasma ball, I'm detecting next to nothing. Pointing towards it, I measure up to 170 volts. I am basically using the lead as an antenna to pick up the radio frequency electric field emitted. The high frequency AC and low amperage makes the plasma ball safe to touch despite the high voltage inside it. But it also means the electrons and ions in the plasma are not moving in a line from one point to another. They are just vibrating in the same place with the AC frequency, not following a path that the magnet could bend. After a short message, I will test the plasma on a spectrometer. This way I can figure out what gases are inside. And I will tell you about the bad surprise in the experiment. If you want to learn more about how to set up experiments and conduct them, then I have a great tip for you. Brilliant is a problem-solving website and app that teaches you how to think like a scientist with interactive courses and challenges. In the course The Chemical Reaction, you'll learn the fundamentals of chemistry from the perspective of reactions. You'll work through puzzles and patterns to see how charge, energy and probability combine to determine the basic behavior of molecules undergoing chemical reaction. By the end, you will be able to make predictions about simple chemical systems. I'm a fan of science and always like learning more about it. If you are like me, then I highly recommend you go to brilliant.org slash 75 and sign up for free. As a bonus, the first 200 people using the link will even get 20% off the annual premium subscription. Then you can do more crazy stuff without any safety warnings from me. Alright, because of the electric field, I keep a distance between the laptop and plasma ball. And I turn off the room light so only the light from the plasma is picked up. The large one emits mostly infrared and some visible light from the blue red tip streamers. There's even a tiny amount of ultraviolet. The infrared and blue peaks match well with spectral lines from xenon, while the red and ultraviolet match with neon. Not a big surprise since a common mixture for modern plasma balls is neon-xenon. Still, it is a nice feeling to confirm the gases by just measuring the light. Thank you, patrons. Now for the smaller one, which has violet streamers with orange tips. Surely it has a different gas mixture. Uh oh, look at that spectrum. Barely any visible light, only a little infrared, but a whole lot of ultraviolet. I did not expect this to primarily be an ultraviolet light source, even with output in the UVB range. You should wear sunscreen near this. Feeling skeptical, 
I tested if the ultraviolet output is enough to make things fluoresce. And sure enough, the white paper clearly fluoresces blue from the ultraviolet near the small globe. Same story with a high visibility vest. What gases did they choose for the small one? The infrared matches with argon, while the violet and ultraviolet match with nitrogen. They used an argon-nitrogen mixture, probably the same as used inside incandescent bulbs. A cheap, easily available gas mixture. They combined the cheap gas with more valuable low iron glass that lets the ultraviolet pass. Not the best design choice, though it does look pretty. Pretty. I'm not sure about the origin of the big UV peak around 308 to 309 nanometers. My guess is hydroxyl being generated from water vapor by the nitrogen plasma. Comment with your guess. Thanks to my awesome patrons for helping out with the expensive but well worth it spectrometer. I wouldn't have it without your support. If you want to help me keep going with the videos too, I have a link for my patron page in the description under the video. Thank you. Don't forget to click like and subscribe for more discoveries. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.